All right, like, like everybody in the country, day one, a lot of juice. Uh, thank the good Lord for the great weather we had. Uh, you know, like, like we talked about all off seasons, you know, we're reaping the rewards of a lot of hard work. Uh, you know, it's kind of like a celebration of all the recruiting and the work we've done, being able to go out there and have a real college practice like we did. Uh, you know, y'all could see it in the special teams. We just got so many more bodies. Uh, we were able to run three full groups in team periods on the line of scrimmages, which is a real college practice. It was a huge step forward for our program. I thought our kids uh, had great culture today. There was no, we've eliminated all the in-between plays talking. That's no use in that. We look and get the signal. We're helping each other. Uh, just kind of being a more mature, adult-like program. You can see us transitioning from a coach-led team to a player-led team. Uh, you know, like I said all along, man, we're not a finished product, but we're in a much better shape to handle this season. And uh, day one down, uh, saw a lot of good things today. Saw some things you got to correct, obviously. And uh, but spent a lot of work in the low red zone. That's how we start off with fall camp, going red zone. That's what got that from the Patriots. And uh, so, with that, I'll open it up. Obviously, just the first day, but any anybody stand out? Any group in particular stand out? Yeah, you know, without watching tape, you know, so you're going to flash with the skill guys. You know, obviously Jason Brownlee, uh, Ty Keys, they hooked up several times. I thought Zay Franks made some good plays. It was good to see, uh, you know, in some one-on-one -on -one situations. Uh, Caston's a guy that always flashes. We think he's got a chance to have a good good year. I thought our running backs did some really good things, all of them. Uh, you know, on defense, saw a lot of guys flying around. It's hard to single anybody. I think Eric Scott's a really good football player that's uh, really undervalued when you look at the uh, – preseason, All-Americans, All-Conference guys. Nobody ever talks about Eric Scott. We thought he's one of the best corners in the country last year. Nobody ever threw at him. Uh, the NFL guys know about him, which is what matters, right? So, uh, you know, without watching the tape, those are some guys that just flashed, you know, off the deal. Go ahead. Coach, Joe, I'm right? It's Joe, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Nice, nice to see you again, you Coach. Too. I think it's a curious for first practice. How much work are you guys – able to get it realistically? Do you have like a goal? Did you get to everything today in this first day? Yeah, so we, we have an installation process. It's a very thought through, detailed plan. Uh, we wanted to put in all of our low red zone work today. You saw us down in the low red zone from a passing game perspective and run game. We start there just to eliminate soft tissue injuries. We're getting out there and just taking off running. When you go into red zone, it prevents them from cutting loose. So we kind of build to that. Uh, so I thought it was a good day of getting all that stuff in. Cool. Go ahead. Talk about the benefits now of having the OTAs in June and July. Yeah, it's huge, you know, to be able to be with them and to have a little bit of football school, if you will. Every player that plays for us was here all of June and July, which is great commitment, uh, you know, to what we're trying to be. And uh, so there's a lot of familiarity between, you know, all our schemes are back. You know, I'm back, Coach Armstrong's back, Coach Meyer's back. So our schemes in all three phases are all the same. So there's a lot of carryover and uh, we're just in a much more sound situation than we were. Theme, I think. Yeah, it looks like you were able to have three full rotations on that offensive line. Could you just talk about that and how beneficial that is? Yeah, three rotations of scholarship guys too, not just three, not just bodies. You know, it was three full rotations of scholarship guys. We've recruited really well. Now we're young. We are, y'all can look at it, but we're young and talented. So, uh, you know, like I said, man, we're building this program back. And you can see it with the talent that's out there. Last year, trying to assess the team, get to know the team. Now you got a full roster. I mean, just what are some of the biggest things that you're really looking for in this second go around? Yeah, the continued transition from being a coach led program to a player led program, you know, and I think it's going really well. I think we're at that point. You see a lot of leadership arising from the Swayze Bozeman's, Eric Scott's. You know, Jason Brownlee was up here at 5 30 this morning with the music blare and just fired up, ready to go, you know, just setting the pace. Ty Keys is becoming a leader, Bryson Mays, those guys. And then uh, just familiarity with how we do things, the language in which we speak, you know. So, uh, you know, the, the kids know what I'm thinking a lot. They can repeat what I'm going to say a lot, which is a positive, you know, because that's what that's what a true program is when you get to that point, you know. Is that the biggest difference from <clears throat> first day last year to this year? No, the biggest difference is talent. You know, I mean, it's great that all those things, it's great to talk culture and all these cool words that everybody talks about everything, but at the end of the day, players win games. All right, Alabama and Ohio State and Georgia are going to be really good this year because they got way better players than everybody else. So the biggest difference in us from year one to year two is we've got a lot more good football players now than what we did. Coach, what was just the message when you met those guys yesterday when they reported in, you know, coming into the room? What was just, you know, the message right there finding those guys? Up? Yeah, you know, it wasn't, you know, Austin, it wasn't huge because we've been together all summer. You know, we just took a few days off, uh, you know, a little week off right there. So it's glad to have everybody back, glad everybody's healthy, everybody's fired up. Again, this fall camp is a celebration 
of everything we've put in over the course of eight months. You know, from the time FIU ended, and that's, that's recruiting, which involved everybody in our program, players and coaches, all the way through spring lifting, spring workouts, through summer workouts, through academics. We've totally changed the perception of our academics in our football program. You know, and uh, you know we're winning off the field. We're doing all these things. Well, now it's time to start reaping rewards on the field too. And I think everybody is itching to do that and uh, itching to get better. Besides Hayes Maples, where are you guys at from a health standpoint? That's it. He's the only one. He's the only one that 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 that, that didn't go today. I want to ask you about Malik Shorts. Malik is a guy who's kind of seen everything here in his, yep. in his time. How, how good of a, a guy is he to have in your locker room? And obviously, what he does. Good. Yeah, so Malik's a winner. He's won his whole life from Bassville, Mississippi. Then, uh, you know, was on that original Jeff Davis County group. Played under Lance Mancuso, who's one of the greatest leaders of men in the whole country. And uh, Malik knows how to win. He knows what it takes to win. He's an old guy that's seen it all. He's seen a lot of what not to do and what to do. And uh, so he's a great resource for some of those young safeties that are really talented. Uh, he's taken on a big leadership role. He's really grown as a man. And, uh, you know, we're excited or willing he stays healthy and has a great senior year. Looks like Jacarius Castle was out there with the ones. Can you talk about that? Yeah, we, we, we got high hopes for him. We thought he was one of the best players, you know, in our conference. Last year he just couldn't show it because he didn't get the ball a lot because we couldn't get anybody the ball. But, uh, you know, we really think he's going to be a, got a chance to be a really good player. He's really changed his body. Uh, he's really embraced working with Coach Ancar and Coach Lindsey and uh, got a bright future. How you seeing some of the transfers get acclimated? You know, you said like Tyler Knight and those guys. Yeah, they, they they're acclimated. You know, they all enrolled in school in January, so they've been a part of that eight months that I'm talking about. They were here the whole spring, the whole summer, so they're just one of us. You know, we told them the moment they got here, we won't become you. You've got to become us, and you need to do that really, really fast. And they did. And uh, so, man, I don't even look at them as transferred anymore. I mean, they're just us. Coach, can you talk about the transition with the offensive line? Sam Greg stepped in. Yeah, excited about having Sam back. You know, Sam's a guy that's like my brother. He can complete my sentences. He knows how I think. He knows how I want things to be. And he's proven, right? He's a proven commodity on multiple levels. Everywhere he's ever been, uh, they've broken offensive and school records uh, where he's been. He and I were a part of that together for a long time. And then most recently, he was at Liberty, where they set records that nobody ever thought could be done. He's a tremendous teacher, and he's a great human being. Uh, and so, uh, you know, man, I'm, I'm, and he's probably one of the most loyal human beings as a friend uh, that there is in the history of the world. So I'm, I'm excited to have him back. What do you, what do you want to see from those guys, Will, just to kind of, you know, show progress? O-line? Yes, sir. Well, you know, we, we thought we needed to play harder. That's the first thing Sam told them from the day we got here is, hey, guys, you may think you play hard, but you don't. And that's got to change. That was opening meeting, first sentence out of his mouth. And uh, I think you've seen a significant difference in effort uh, already. And then, uh, you know, making sure we fit it up. We got to get O-line is the hardest thing to coach in the United States of America, that and quarterback, because you got to get five guys to fit five people up, and nobody knows who those five people are going to be until after the ball snaps. So it's a reactive position. And, um, you know, he's just a phenomenal conceptual teacher that does a great job of that. So what we're, what we're wanting to see improvement on is effort, and getting the right hats on the right people consistently. What's it like to see Chandler Pittman back after his recovery? He's just have another play with the elbow. Yeah, great kid who wins off the field, phenomenal academically, a uh, real winner in every way. Played for Teddy Dice at McGee and, you know, 3A player of the year. Uh, Chandler is completely cleared medically. Uh, when we get the pads on and go live, there's always a mental hurdle you have to go over with an injury like that. And we'll see where he's at mentally. Some kids jump over it fast. Some people it takes a little while. Uh, but we're going to progress him as fast as he's willing to take it. There will come a day where Chandler Pittman is a great player, player at Southern Miss. We hope it's right now, but we're going to do it at the pace that's best for him, and we'll see when the pads come on. That's when that's when that'll come. The offensive line, just um, how underrated is like chemistry with those guys, making sure they're all on the same page and being in sync, and you know, the same, you know, five guys, you know, having reps together. Yeah, I think, I think it's an important part of the cake, but I think it's kind of the icing on the cake. You know, the first thing is we got to play hard and we got to block the right people. And then after we start playing hard and we're blocking the right guys, then we can start having great chemistry and those things. You know what I mean? So it's kind of that last thing you put on that takes you from good to great. And we got a lot of guys returning. 
And even though Coach Greg is new, he's been with me for so long, it's almost like he's a returning guy instead of a new guy. Anything else?